don't live on the trickle which is flowing under the threshold of the gate, open it so you can go ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep until it floods and fills us like abundant life in us. You can get the full length videos of Mike's new monthly series, Restoring First Love, as they're released at eg.freedomarc.org slash first dash love. There was a long lead in to these experiences and God had been preparing me my whole life to enter into this. If I didn't know it, but I look back and I can see the many signposts on my journey that pointed the direction that God was doing. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. And often when we're going through something, we can't really see what's going on, why it's happening. And we may emotionally be so involved that it's difficult to come to a place where we surrender. But actually, when I look back and I see so many encounters that now I realize was part of the process. At the time, they were just wonderful experiences, but they weren't random experiences. God had me on a journey that facilitated this wonderful union. So there are questions that you may have and they're worth asking. You know, where is my first love gate? Where is the garden of our heart? Where is the dance floor? Where is the soaking room? Where, where are they literal places? You know, well, there are experiences that you can have and, you know, the garden of our heart. And I will go into this more when I when, when we really talk about it um, is something that describes our soul um, and the way God wants to engage us there. So I think they're figurative in one sense, but they're also places of engagement in a dimensional way within me and within each of us that relates to spirit and soul body in in overlap but how does engaging them relate to this process of union you know what happens what does god do and what does that do to us now my experiences in revelation were progressive they didn't jump in at the level i know it now i would not have been able to cope with cope with that so the relationship deepened and as i progressed in the relationship i understood more and more of who God was and more and more of who I am. Now, Revelation 3.20, you know, I've heard, you know, I think this was the first verse I ever spoke about publicly in a youth group um, that was doing the Sunday service in a, in a Methodist church. And I was given this verse and asked to speak about it. Now, of course, in that those days, I thought this verse, and I'll read it, now, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. Now, of course, I interpreted that as a salvation experience. God is outside of everyone and he's knocking and asking each of us to open the door for us to come in, him to come into our lives. And he's speaking to everyone. And if they can hear his voice, maybe they'll open the door. But I realized that this isn't because it was talking to a church in Revelation. It was talking to a church or the seven churches. So it's not talking to people who don't know God. It's talking to people who do. Um, now, ultimately, you could say that it's talking to people who don't know, but not from the outside. This is not an outside in salvation experience, but an inside out being filled and flowing with life. So if God is in everyone and he wants to everyone to experience him, then he is knocking. And really, rather than saying, open the door and let me out, you know, or let me in that way. He's basically saying, I'm within your spirit. Let me into your soul and body. Let me fill you. Let me share life with you, which is what dining was all about. It was a very intimate thing to dine with somebody so that we can dine with him and he with us. There's this sharing of life together, you know, but. It isn't per se him on the outside of us. It's him working on the inside of us. So when Paul experienced a light around him, his revelation was God was pleased to reveal his son in me, already in him. And that revelation came. That was when Paul effectively opened the door to welcome God, who was already in him, to fill him and engage his soul. Because God had been working in his spirit and Paul had been resisting it because of his insistence to follow his own religious path of Judaism. 
Now then he surrendered that path and entered into a relationship which opened up a whole different realm of knowledge, experience, understanding of who God was. And then Paul preaches this amazing message of God in the Gentiles, this message of inclusion and mystic union. You know, when I first heard the term mystic union, I was totally against it. Just was so programmed to have the traditional view of salvation when a friend of mine encouraged me to read a book on mystic union by john crowder i think it was i was horrified and and i never read it you know and but over a number of years god began to show me what mystic union was all about and the fact of what he has done in the finished work of christ and the grace message to which now i fully embrace and you know and i had the privilege actually a, a few couple of years ago of meeting up with my friend again who I hadn't seen for a few years and sharing with him how sorry I was that I'd rejected his message. And although we stayed in relationship and we we worked it through, so it wasn't an issue to us relationally, I didn't receive the truth that could have helped me several years before it did. Uh, and I shared with him how he had been part of my journey, even though at the time he may have thought I was rejecting him, Actually, that seed was there at work in me, just like it was in Paul, that God was pleased to reveal his son in me. And I discovered that reality as well. So to begin with, I believe it's good to open that gate regularly, daily, by choice. It's a choice to say, I open, I welcome you into me. And I engage you in this amazing romance of first love. And that's what my experience was. It was a romance. It was me entering into a first love experience that I never really had in the physical realm. So I didn't really understand what first love was all about. And of course, I didn't know even then what was going on. But this is where I know God has brought me. So to experience God's first love, for all of us, we need to choose to open and, and accept the invitation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, there's an invitation there that God has given us, that Jesus has given us, that if we open the door, he's going to come in and we're going to feast together and we're going to celebrate and we're going to enjoy life. It's also an opportunity to express our first love for God. As much as he wants to express his love for us, he wants us to be able to express our love for him because it's this is something which is mutual. It's not a one sided relationship. This is a relationship which is a real full on relationship. So what is our daily experience of first love? You know, do we have one? Have we ever encountered that? And people say, well, how can I do it? Well, by choice, even if you can't see it, it's true that it's there within you. Make the choice. Let God know I'm going to open that gate today. You can close your eyes. You can start to meditate on the gate. You can choose to see the picture of you opening the door, letting God's presence come and engage you. For me, it was always a hug. It was always an embrace. That was what I experienced whenever I opened that door. You know, now, now I realize that within that place, there is a fountain. It's the source of life. I can drink from that fountain. As Jesus said, we could do rivers of living water begin to flow into me, into the core of my being. All of that began to take place, but it was the embrace which was the key for me. So how does God express his love for us and to us? And I guess everyone may experience that slightly differently. But I believe it's through what he's done and continues to do through the finished work of cross Jesus, what God did before the foundation of the world, through the relationship he's continually pursuing. Um, through what he says and continues to say, because I want to hear what he says about me and what he ongoingly says about me. So I can embrace that as the vast sum of his thoughts towards me through what he desires and intends for us. And I do believe he has in desires and intention for us to fully know the depths of that union and relationship and fully embrace who we really are because the world needs us. Through always being available to us, he never leaves or forsakes us. It may feel like he is, but most of that is our perception. It's not the truth. He's never, ever left us. 
through always wanting the best for us, being generous and lavish in grace, through bringing good out of all the situations in our lives, which we may make terrible mistakes and do things which are beyond, but nothing is beyond his ability to bring good out of it and to redeem it in our lives. And he will always do it because he's merciful. And I believe it's through being unconditional in love, limitless in grace and triumphant in mercy. So how do we receive and experience his love? So choose to open the gate for the intimacy of a personal interactive love relationship to begin. Now, don't live on the trickle which is flowing under the threshold of the gate. Open it so you can go knee deep, ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep until it floods and fills us like abundant life in us. How do we express our love for God and to him? And it isn't just through praise and worship, which would have been the primary thing that we thought, well, I'm expressing my worship to God and my love for him in songs of adoration, in songs of praise, which is great. But it's not limited to that. That's just one small aspect of it. Now, showing our love to God, I believe, should be a priority. It needs to be a priority in our lives. If we're going to embrace God's love for us, it needs to be a priority that we engage the opportunity to do that, both to receive and to give. God is always available to us and promises never to leave or forsake us. Therefore, if we ever choose to open that first love gate, he is going to come in. He is speaking. Are we listening? Are we listening to the invitation he's given us to open the gate? Close your eyes. Begin to think about living loved. That right now, God loves you. Right now, his love is surrounding you. Begin to come to that place of meditation, to that place of rest. Start breathing slowly, more deeply, more focused. So you can breathe in and breathe out the unconditional love of the Father. You're breathing it in. You're taking it internally. It's flowing in you. Feel that unconditional love flow through your being. So just become still. And I would encourage you, whether you've done this a thousand times, whether you've never done it before, picture a door. Picture the door of first love within your spirit. If you struggle to picture or think of a door, think of one which you know really well, your front door, a door you're familiar with. Just begin to imagine that door. Picture it. You may feel it, you may sense it, you may just have that sense of knowing, or you might be able to see the door in your mind's eye, in your the eyes of your heart, your imagination. So picture that door. And by your choice, you can open the door. Jesus is knocking. Jesus is speaking to you, asking you to open that door. He's given you the invitation. If you open that door, he is going to come and you're going to experience his presence. So I encourage you, just reach out in your imagination by choice and open the door. Make that choice to open the door, open it wide and just welcome the presence of Father, Son and Spirit. Welcome the family of God. That they might surround you 
you might be in their very midst as they embrace you, hug you, entwine with you, come into a union, a deeper relationship. Stay in that embrace. Stay in that place of intimacy. The Father, Jesus, they may speak to you. They may whisper into your ear. They may woo you. They may begin to say, Lakar, I want you to be my very own. Stay in that place of rest, that place of intimacy. in the embrace of love I believe that God would want to speak to you call you deeper open your heart open your spiritual ears to listen let your spirit and soul engage with these words from the Father Son, I call your spirit to attention. Son, listen. Listen to the words of my heart. I call you to step out of independence and sink into the ocean of love and joy and peace. I call forth your true identity as a son, as a co-heir, I call you to return to your true origin within my heart. I call you to enter into my rest. I call you to come deeper into intimacy. I call you to lie down in an oasis of peace by the quiet brook of bliss. I call forth your sonship identity, position and authority. I call forth your destiny to manifest God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I call forth your destiny to fill the earth with my glory. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you unconditionally. Rest in my love, rest in my joy, rest in my peace. I love you, I love you. I love you.
you can stay in that place of rest as long as you want. Let it be your abiding dwelling place. Let it be a constant in your life. Don't rush. Don't feel you have to come out of that place. Stay there if you'd like. Just stay there. 